Welcome to the Final Cut. I am Dimitri and I will be your tour guide on our review of Chernobyl Diaries. Yes, folks, Mark the Movie Man here. We have the chopping block today. Oren Peely's latest. He produced and wrote it. And you've got new time director Bradley Parker, who normally is a visual effects supervisor. But this time he's decided to take the direction of a story about six U.S. tourists who decide to go on an extreme tour in Russia. And so they go to Pripyat, uh, which is the town just outside of Chernobyl, uh, where Reactor 4 melted down. This is the town where all the workers lived. And they had to abandon it overnight when the reactor went on meltdown in order to survive the catastrophe okay so the whole town is kind of preserved all their personal possessions and things left behind and everything and tourists come by uh, because the radiation radiation levels aren't that high to where your hair is going to fall out anytime soon but uh, they go there to take a look at this kind of preserved town okay and well when the van breaks down while they're in town they come to find out the town is not as abandoned as it seems, and they spend the rest of the movie trying to escape radioactive wolves, as well as these creepy uh, beings that seem to be within the town. Folks, Chernobyl Diaries has atmosphere. I can give you the positive there. It has some fantastic atmosphere, some creepy uh, feel to it throughout the film, and that's because of the setting it's in. I really liked the setting that it was in, the idea that it was this whole preserved abandoned town, okay, in a, a somewhat radioactive area. I mean, there's rich for storylines, so it's got the creepy and the atmosphere, and they did fantastic with replicating a town uh, that feel of abandonment, okay, the production design, the set designs were fantastic, they felt, they didn't feel set up, they felt like it was a true abandoned city that they were filming this in, so they did very well there, okay, and so that part was great. Unfortunately, just about everything else in this film falls apart. I mean, let's first talk about the dialogue, which, if you're making a tongue-in-cheek kind of poke fun film, great, but this is so cliche and bad dialogue, okay? In this script that it just... Oh. And then there's the shaky cam. No, folks, this is not a found footage film, though it's shot like one. I kid you not. That You've got the moving camera and everything, kind of shoddy audio at points, but it's not a found footage film, which, if it was, at least I could excuse the crappy camera work and the really the bad audio in parts, okay? So, I mean... Uh, yeah, fine, you know, if you're not going to do found footage movie, don't shoot it like one. It's distracting there as well, okay? And then the characters themselves. These poor, these are all newer actors on here uh, that are starring in this. Mostly have done TV or voice acting, uh, you know? And so the, they're suffering from this bad script where their characters are dumb. I mean, the only one that's not dumb is Amanda, played by Devin Kelly. She hasn't been in much. Her character, she's the brunette of the group, uh, actually comes up with, hey, maybe we should go do this. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the stupid vote wins out over it, and so she follows the group as they go do the stupidest things that you would do in a horror film, okay? So, it just, in general, it, every other part of it really falls apart. It's a shame because it had potential being so much more. It had an interesting idea, you know? And then it's funny because when they're being pursued by these creatures and the wolves, and then suddenly when you just think you don't have any threat going on, then they toss in, oh wait, no. Oh, radiation level's okay. Oh, radiation's okay. Oh, my face is melting. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. Hell, there's even a scene in there they rip off, I swear, from Night of the Living Dead, okay, uh, with people stuck in a building with boarded... Yeah, it's... It had the potential of being something more interesting than what it was, while the history part of it is very cool. And the performance of Yuri the Tour Guide is probably one of the more shining moments of this film. It just falls flat in every other aspect. Even towards the end where they try to give an explanation of the beans and things going on, just seemed half-assed. I almost wish they would have not tried to give any explanation, okay? I wish it would have just ended at one point and them not try to give any type of explanation of what's going on in the town. It would have made it a little more creepy and felt better, and they could have even left it for Chernobyl Diaries too, which I hope doesn't get made. Yes, folks, one and a half stubs from the movie man on this. I, it's for Dimitri and the creepy and the history, and that's about it. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stuff.